Ah yes, Pascal's Triangle. The at first glance arbitrary setup that seems to hide thousands of mind-blowing facts. I mean, why do the numbers magically pop up in algebra? And wait, it has an evil twin now? If you're not familiar with Opuscal here, you start with two borders of ones. Then to produce the middle numbers, you add up the two numbers above it. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, and so on. The numbers on the edges also make more sense if you consider all the empty spots to be 0. Like 0 plus 1 produces 1, 0 plus 0 is 0. That's how you produce the triangle. What is it good for? You'd be surprised. Here's something that seems completely unrelated. Random test scores. You're doing a quiz of true-false questions. And because you slept through all the lectures, you have no idea what's going on and guess randomly for the entire quiz. What is the probability of each possible score? If there are zero questions, the probability of getting zero is one because that's the only thing that can happen. If there is one question, it's one half probability of getting zero and one half probability of getting one. Starting from when there's two questions, the math gets more involved so I'll just state the numbers right now and explain later. When there are two questions, the probability of getting zero is one fourth, one is two fourths, and getting two out of two is probability one fourth. When there are three questions, zero is one eighth, one is three eighths, two is three eighths, and three is one eighth. When there are four questions, probability of getting zero out of four is one sixteenth, one is four sixteenths, two is six sixteenths, three is four sixteenths, and four is one sixteenth. Hmm, I can't put my finger on it, but something here looks familiar. Okay, why does Pascal's triangle show up in these probabilities? What wizardry is this? Let's calculate the probability of getting some score on a true-false quiz. When I was in high school, one of my roommates was great at math. Once I asked him what he thought the hardest field of math was, he said it was counting. Counting is exactly what you need to do to find this probability. The probability of an outcome is the number of all possibilities in the outcome divided by the total possibilities. For example, if you do the quiz of 5 true-false questions by picking randomly, what is the probability of getting a 3 out of 5? We need to count how many total ways we can answer the quiz and how many ways we can answer the quiz while getting a 3 out of 5. Then the probability is the ratio of these two numbers. Every possible way to answer the quiz includes getting all correct, all but the last one correct, all but the fourth one correct, all but the last two correct, and so on. We need to count all of these. Right, I did just list all 32 of them, but how could we have counted them more quickly without exhausting my hand? Let's only look at the first question. How many ways are there to answer the first question? 2. Either is correct or wrong. What about the second question? Also two ways, correct or wrong. How many ways are there to answer both the first and second question? If the first question is correct, the second one can be correct or wrong, two ways. If the first question is wrong, the second can also be correct or wrong, so that's two more ways. That's four total ways to answer the first two questions. And the first three questions? Well, if the first two questions are correct, correct. There are two ways to answer the third question. If the first two questions are correct, wrong. There are also two ways to answer the third question. If the first two answers are wrong, correct. Again, two ways for third. If the first two are wrong, wrong. Still two. Adding them all together, there are eight ways to answer the first three questions. For each of the four ways to answer the first two, there are two ways to answer the third. Do you see the pattern? 
You ask how many possibilities there are for the first thing, then for each of those. How many possibilities for the second thing, then for each possibility for the first and second. How many possibilities for the third thing. You multiply all of these together to get the final number. Because there are five questions, and each has two possibilities, the total number of ways to answer them is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the 5th. That's how to count the total number of possibilities. We still need the number of possibilities where it's a 3 out of 5 score. We can list all 10 of them here, but again, we want to be able to calculate it without writing all of them out. Let's not go too advanced yet. Let's count how many ways there are to get 1 out of 5 correct. We need to choose one of the five questions to be the correct one. There's five choices, so the answer is five. What about two out of five? We need to choose two answers to be the correct ones. Let's choose them one at a time. For the first one, there are five choices. Now we choose the second one. Because we need two different correct answers, we can't repick the one we've already chosen to be correct. And therefore, there are only four options left to choose from. For each of the five initial choices, there are four choices for the second correct question. Therefore, the total number of choices for two out of five questions is five times four, or twenty. Wait, we counted ten before. Why is it twenty now? Ah, we've actually overcounted. When picking the correct answers, if we pick question one, then question two, that's the same as picking question 2, then 1. The final correct answer is still the first 2, yet we've counted it twice. To get the actual number, we need to divide by 2, because every correct answer set has two possible orderings. The number of ways to get a score of 2 is 20 divided by 2, which is 10. Finally, how many ways can you get 3 out of 5? We choose 3 questions to be the correct ones. We have 5 choices for the first correct one, 4 choices for the second, and 3 choices for the third. That's 5 times 4 times 3 total. But again, we've overcounted. For the possibility where the first 3 are correct, we've counted 1, 2, 3, but also 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, and so on. To undo the overcount, we need to divide by the number of orderings of 3 things. That number is 3 times 2 times 1. 3 choices for the first, two choices for the second, and one choice for the last. Therefore, the number of ways to choose three correct questions out of five is five times four times three divided by three times two times one. For choosing k correct out of n questions, that's n times n minus one times n minus two all the way to n minus k plus one divided by k times k minus one times k minus two all the way to one. This formula is usually written as n choose k for brevity is quite fundamental in counting. We now know that when you do n questions, there are two to the n ways to answer the quiz. And the number of ways to get a score of k is n choose k. Therefore, the probability of getting k out of n correct is n choose k divided by two to the n. That brings us back to here when I wrote out this triangle of probabilities. The denominators are indeed all 2 to the n, and if you do the math, the numerators are also all n choose k. Then why are the numerators all the same as Pascal's triangle? Because the numbers in Pascal's triangle are all n choose k. If you count from 0, the kth number in the nth row of Pascal's triangle is n choose k. That just kicks the can down the road to why Pascal's triangle has the exact same values as n choose k. Why? n choose k is a counting thing. Just like you know a circle must be related wherever you see pi, there must be some counting game hidden in Pascal's triangle to reduce these n choose k's. Let's write a proof that n choose k is equal to the kth number of the nth row in Pascal's triangle. Pretend this triangle is New York City, and this corner is 0th Street, 0th Avenue. You want to get from here to your friend's house at 3rd Street, 2nd Avenue. How many possible routes are there? Assuming you don't backtrack, there is only one way to get to these edge intersections, 
on 0th Avenue and 0th Street. So we put 1's on all these intersections. How many ways are there to get here? Well, there's two. One way to come from the left, and one way from the right. What about here? There's only one way to come from the left, and two to come from the right. That's three total ways. Yes, it's exactly Pascal's triangle. In general, the number of paths to get to some intersection is the sum of the number of paths for each of the two intersections above it. You must get to either one of those and then come down. But adding numbers to produce the next one is exactly how Pascal's triangle is defined. With that, we prove that the number of paths for each point is the same as Pascal's triangle. Now, we just need to prove that the number of paths to get to the kth intersection at the nth row is also n choose k. If we prove that each number of Pascal's triangle is the number of paths, and the number of paths equals n choose k, that means we prove that each number of Pascal's triangle is n choose k. To do this, we're going to find a second way to count the number of paths. How can we frame a path from the tip to this intersection as choosing k items out of n? Pause the video now if you'd like to figure it out for yourself. Here, it might be clearer if we rotate this over. When you take a path through New York without backtracking, you always have two options at each intersection, to go right or to go downwards. We need to get to 2nd Avenue, 3rd Street. To start at 0th Avenue and end up on 2nd Avenue, you must go right exactly twice. To get from 0th Street to 3rd Street, you need to go down exactly 3 times. That means you make 5 choices at 5 intersections, going right twice and down 3 times. When you go right twice and down 3 times, you end up at 2nd Avenue 3rd Street. When you go to 2nd Avenue 3rd Street without backtracking, you always go right twice and down 3 times. Those two have a 1 to 1 correspondence. Therefore, to get to this intersection, you must make 5 choices, and 2 of those 5 choices must be to go right. The number of possible paths is 5, choose 2. Of course, what I just said applies to all of these intersections. This proves that the number of paths to get to the kth intersection at the nth row is n choose k. To reiterate, we proved the numbers in Pascal's triangle are the numbers of paths to these points. We then proved that the number of paths to a point is n choose k. Therefore, Pascal's triangle is made of n choose k's. And of course, that also shows these numbers are the numerators of probabilities of test scores. We used a path counting argument as a middleman to prove a fact that has nothing to do with paths. I think that's pretty amazing.